Okay, today we're going to be talking about bob and case tension for the Singer CG or commercial grade series sewing machines. And first of all, I'm going to show you how to take out the bob and case. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, presser foot off and uh, finger guard just it'll make it easier for you to see exactly uh, what I'm doing here. I'm also going to go ahead and remove this needle just so we can have a nice clear work area. Go ahead and slide open your plate here. This already has a bobbin in it so we'll go ahead and take that out. Your needle plate simply lifts up on the right side and you lift it up and then pull it out. We'll sit that here. And there is a little holder here. It's spring loaded. There's a little slit inside that holder. And if you just take a screwdriver and push it, um, the bobbin case will simply lift right out. And then you can let that back go. And so now here we have our bobbin case. And we're going to talk about how to adjust the tension on this bobbin case. If you'll notice on the uh, side of the case, if you have it facing you um, like this, the right screw, we don't want to mess with that. That holds all the, uh, the tension springs in place. The left screw, however, is the screw that we use to adjust the bobbin tension. And I've got a tension screwdriver here, which is an itty bitty tiny precision type uh, flathead screwdriver. When you adjust the tension, you want to do so in quarter turn increments. So basically as a guide, I'm going to go ahead and our bobbin case would normally be sitting in the machine like this. Go ahead and put the bobbin in, of course, with the thread coming off of the bottom of the bobbin. And I'm going to go ahead and slide underneath that. And as you'll see, the tension on the bobbin case isn't even strong enough to hold its own weight. So that means that the tension is far too loose. So we'll go ahead and tighten this a quarter turn. And as you can see here, um, that was all it took, and that's probably going to be the correct tension. Um, as you can see, the tension strong enough to hold the bobbin case uh, in its own weight. And if you were to jiggle this, it should drop kind of like a spider in little increments. It shouldn't just free fall. If it free falls, then the um, tension is far too loose. And if it doesn't uh, drop just a little bit, then the tension could be a little too tight. So it should just kind of look like a spider and um, just fall in little small increments. You should be able to kind of jiggle it just a little bit and it fall down, but then still be able to hold its own weight. So this tension seems to be about accurate uh, for this. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the, uh, the bobbin. We're going to go ahead and reinstall this back inside of here. Again, we're just going to reverse the process. You want to take your screwdriver, press that retainer back. And when you put this in, there, this top lip should go on top of the black metal here. This top lip should go on top of the black metal lip. This piece should go underneath the black metal. So we'll sit that piece on top and just kind of move it into place and making sure that this piece, this bottom lip of the bobbin case is underneath the black metal and this piece sits on top. Then you can let your retainer back in place and it should not hit anything. It's just like a puzzle. It should, it should perfectly fit in that slot. Then if you turn your hand wheel, um, you can kind of jiggle it back and forth. That bobbin case should stay put. It should jiggle just a little bit, but not spin or rotate. Then we'll go ahead and put our needle plate back on. You're going to want to first put on the left. 
you'll slide it underneath this button. This button is spring-loaded. So when you slide it underneath there, that little button will pop right up. And then you can just drop it into place. And then, of course, when you put your bobbin in, always make sure your thread is coming off of the bottom of the bobbin in a clockwise um, motion. So we'll drop it in here and then we'll just follow that first little guide, get it around to the second, it shouldn't go anymore. And then of course thread your upper portion of your machine and you're ready to sew.